want to talk about modern SDR uh, radios, and this is important to me, so uh, strap in and hear me out. I put out a video recently about upgrading your radio or your antenna, and it's this one here. And a couple of the comments were interesting, uh, kind of out of scope of what I was discussing, but interesting all the same. So it is worthwhile stepping back and talking about something slightly bigger and why I don't want an SDR radio. And I've been thinking about this for a long time and I have finally put my finger on it. So you can consider this, if you like, as a part two of that video, but it stands on its own. I'm just watching a puppy. And before anybody reaches for the keyboard, this, I'm not anti SDR. It's not about what's best on paper. It's about how I listen, what works for me, and why newer isn't always better, All right? depending on where you are and how you operate. You may be the same, I don't know. So let's start with location. I am lucky, I operate from a very quiet QTH, electrically quiet, right? low background noise. And that changes the entire argument, it does for me anyway. In a high noise environment, modern SDR, SDR radios absolutely earn their keep, right? noise blanking, DSP, adaptive filtering, they can make an impossible band usable. But in a quiet environment, the problem is different. I'm not fighting noise. I'm listening through it. You have to appreciate that. I'm literally listening through the noise. And this is where older high-end radios still make a lot of sense. The TS990 doesn't try and reinterpret the signal for me. It doesn't reshape the audio. What I hear is the noise, right? It's honest noise, it's consistent noise, and buried inside it is the same information at the, at the antenna as your modern SDR radio gets to process. But I'm using my brain, and that's the thing. Because after decades of listening, my brain has learned what to do with hiss. I have learned the cadence, tone, timing, my brain hears things that aren't obvious on a waterfall or after heavy, um, heavy processing. In other words, my ears, my brain's doing all the work. It's like having a personal SDR inside this thing. It's no different. Right, X-ray, Tango. Uh, kilo 8 to Mike, Radio Delta. Oh, my God, Mike, is that you? <laughs> and this is the point I really want to labour because I think some people believe there's more magic going on than there actually is. An SDR radio cannot hear beyond its own envelope. It can't invent signals that didn't arrive at the antenna. Both an older analogue radio and a modern SDR are fed by exactly the same... RF energy, the same noise, the same fragments, the same weak signals. Nothing extra magically appears just because the processing is digital. What changes is where the decisions are made, right? An older electrically quiet radio, and I need to say this assumes, you know, there's some very fine low noise electronics inside this imaginary radio, but this quiet radio presents us with what's there and largely says, OK, here you go, you decide, have fun, mate. On the other hand, an SDR interprets that RF and changes it into numbers. Then it applies a mathematical algorithm, decides what it thinks is signal, what it thinks is noise, and then reconstructs it as an audio stream. Now, that's not extra information, that's interpretation. And frankly, I think it does an amazingly good job. But DSP doesn't hear more. It decides more. And sometimes those decisions are helpful. Sometimes they're brilliant. But sometimes they might remove exactly the tiny, tiny irregularities I'm listening for, which brings me to pileups and how often are you actually assembling a call sign from fragments and need this heavy DSP low noise thing? Honestly, how often? You know, and in a pileup, on a poor path, with a weak signal, you know, somebody running 100 watts of a dipole on the other side of the world. Now, I am probably the odd one out 
here, but I often do this live. Watch my long haul live streams. I put super weak call signs together in real time in front of you under stressful live conditions. A syllable here, a constant there, a rhythm that feels right. I check the time. I look at the gray line. I start making decisions already. I think about the propagation. Wait, is this long path VK or ZL? Uh, it's, it's quarter past eight on a, on a Friday morning in October, you know. Oh, yeah, it's probably ZL. Um, it should be dead already, but I'll listen more. I hear another Z and then a Quebec and a Delta. And I think, oh, it's, maybe this is Roly. Roly, is that you, mate? Give me a Roger, give me a Roger. And I'll hear Roger, Roger, right in the back of the set. And I might hear four and two, four and two, four and two. And I, I, I you know, thank, thank Roly and, uh, and log it. Well done, nice one, mate. And I'll be honest, when I re-listen to the stream afterwards, there are moments where I genuinely can't hear what the hell I was hearing right then. But at the time of operating, I was completely focused. I was locked in. My brain was filling the gaps, cross-checking patterns, rejecting what didn't fit. And that process relies on continuity. It relies on a stable analog noise, not audio, in my opinion, that's constantly being reshaped. Because once the radio starts deciding which fragments matter and which don't, can it remove the very clues I'm using? That's not a criticism of DSP. It's a, it's a different way of operating. And I just want to talk noise for a minute because I see on the, the comments on the live chat, whoa, turn back off the RF gain. It's so noisy. Is it? I've got no idea. Right? I'm taking in the whole thing, the hiss, the data, the lot. My own internal SDR does that for me. Now, I was chatting to Mike, M0 MSN, in the summer. <laughs> These dogs are making a rain. Oi, 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 calm down. In the summer, he had bought, I'm not telling you which one, but he had bought a really high spec radio uh, and he couldn't live with it. Not because it was bad, but because he could hear the DSP working. He's, he's changed it again now, but that's Mike. He's found a radio where the noise and the DSP works for him and it's stable, predictable. And his brain can relax into it. And that brings us to fatigue, uh, fatigue isn't it? because inconsistent noise tires you out. And I do, a, you know, when I do put my headphones on, I might be on it for like four hours. Stable noise doesn't tire you out. Wow, we run the 990, my TS Kenwood, you know, flagship radio, side by side with some modern, really modern radios. And yes, technically the newer radios are quieter. There's no doubt about it. The 990 is noisier. But we're not talking a lot. I could back off the RF gain, particularly on the low bands. But it doesn't stop me hearing station that others say they can't hear with the best gear in the world. That's not because my radio is better, but because maybe I'm listening differently. Okay? And, you know, because this is the odd bit. Sp spreadsheets don't do the measuring. Sherwood tables and ranks radios, they don't rank operators. They assume the goal, or, or Sherwood does, or we all do, we assume the goal is maximum you know, noise rejection at all costs. And that's fine. If that's what you want, I don't. I don't want the radio deciding what I should hear. I want to hear everything. And I decide for myself, well, I don't. My brain does it all for me. I don't hear the hits. I like it that way. My brain just works that way. I enjoy that analogue sound. I enjoy the feel of it. I enjoy sitting at the rate at a radio that was built unapologetically as an analogue flagship with some digital toys not a fully software-defined radio that crunches numbers and tells me maybe what I should be hearing. Then uh, the two are slightly different. So yes, in a high noise environment, a modern SDR may well outperform it, absolutely. And that's real life. I'm in a quiet location with trained ears, an older high-end radio still holding its own. And in some ways, and for some people, it, it can be more enjoyable. And, and actually less tiring. The best radio isn't the one at the top of the list. It's the one that lets you hear best. And for me, and for a whole other host of features beyond the scope of this, that is still the TS990. All right, enjoy your radio, within reason. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Merry Christmas, bye for now.